Hey everyone, Sir Termo here again. And today I wanted to showcase a little bit of Panting Barriers because Panting Barriers, even though it's not a fun and meme type of deck like I've been wanting to do for this next week, is still a very super highly competitive deck that just won multiple people the past seasonal. Out of nowhere, Panthean Barriers came back to kind of dominate the top 32 in the seasonals, which is something that I personally didn't expect. I thought Panthean was definitely a good choice to try to beat like the Aatrox Kane decks, but I didn't think it was good enough because he still kind of lost to like those aggro decks like Blue Regents. But I was proven wrong, all right? The list that I'm showcasing today is the list from Ultraman, who's our newest European, I guess, EMEA -E seasonal champion. Uh, and he piloted this list like extremely well. We also saw the list show up in the American seasonal as well. So I figured let's go ahead, get this out of the way, and then we can spend the rest of the week doing fun decks before the season restarts on the next week. Now that the patch got delayed for like a week. But anyways, how does this list work? If you're not familiar with Panthen Barrows, uh, the idea is simple, right? You're spending you spend it like your self-target spell, usually the gems from the Nari Cultist or your equipment like the Lodestone or the equipment from the Improvise to slowly start leveling out your Pantheon. I say slowly, but this deck can also level up Pantheon just as quick as other Pantheon decks. Pantheon could be leveled up by turn 6, turn 7 the latest because of how cheap you can get those gems to be able to actually level your Pantheon and because you can cycle the equipment if you get two equipment, like if you get the Lodestone plus anything from the improvise so that's one win condition one win condition is that you just level up pantheon then drop your big pantheon with all the keywords either to win the game the other win condition is barriers barriers is really nice in this deck because it lets you play all the cultist package spells and units like for example the Nari cultist although she is in target so we could play her anyways if we we're playing other pantheon decks but it's still nice right you get the idea it lets you play it, it lets you play all the lunari cards like momentous choice for second bakai furious wilder giving you access to the strikes and that support that you will find if you're playing like panty of demacia like we used to in the past additionally you also get access to stuff like unforgiving coal which lets us beat those atrox cane decks and be able to protect our pantheon against certain strikes or protect barriers as well barriers also becomes an alternate win condition because barriers himself will have overwhelming quick attack once it's leveled up and because you're self-targeting your units to be able to level up pantheon you get to naturally level up barriers as well and then set up a, a double a double threat between pantheon and barriers to just kind of finish up almost any opponent that's your main win condition the rest of the deck is just supporting cards to get there like yeah we play saga seeker but very rarely is your saga seeker going to become like your main win condition it's just there as a unit that can get really big and allow you to kind of stall at the opponent from their attacks we play stuff like divine clerk to give us some additional life steal if we do run into those little gins type of decks or any other aggro decks uh for second back it's really nice to predicting our pantheon allowing us to potentially get there uh on ending wave is nice if you're running out of resources later late in the game and he lets us reaction to bait back Pantheon to the field or potentially even have double Pantheon can be also be really, really clutch. Overall, the deck is kind of like a mid-range deck, kind of trying to finish up again, again, one of your two champions. Although sometimes you can also finish up with Horasi. Don't forget about Horasi coming down, giving everything, giving your next unit spell shield and kind of going from there. There's a nice little play that I like to do sometimes where if you get the overwhelm weapon, you can put it on a Horasi and then you have Horasi plus whatever unit the support both having overwhelm or fearsome or whatever but yeah i think enough of that i think a lot of people know how to play pantheon so let's just jump right ahead to the games and remember if you like our content make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us we post a lot of videos every single day i'm looking for a lot of fun decks to post over the next week so if you have any suggestions or anything really fun or really meme -y that you want us to showcase drop it in the comments and we'll take a look enjoy the games in this match we're going against swain nora they do have access to Disintegrate and Minimorph and obviously Block etc which are all really bad against us. Um, I'm looking for Lunari and looking for uh, Lunari Cultus, my equipment, my Pantheon, right? So I think I have to mulligan everything away. Saga Seeker is not bad but we don't have anything to actually equip the Saga Seeker with. Ooh, this is kind of rough. This is kind of rough. I can play Saga Seeker on turn 2 but it's probably going to die to like a Pokey Stick. I have to wait for the opponent to tap out of two mana and then hope that they don't have access to like a... Okay, so I gotta hope that they have access to a group show, right? If they have access to a group show, they get to kill my group, my Saga Seeker. 
and then we don't have a way to actually play the improvise on the saga seeker but i have to play the saga seeker now because the self improvise from the shepherd does it count as a trigger for pantheon so blaze edge or group shot is the big punish here Oporto might decide not to go for it because we can have Pell Cascade and they go for it and they actually got it from the Concology. It could also be like, they actually got it from the Concology. It could also have been the, um, uh, the, who what's it called? Yeah, that's so unfortunate. That's so lucky. I mean, I respect it. You gotta go for it, right? You gotta go for it. So I don't blame them. Let's go Shepard. I mean, I know it's not counting as an equipment. I don't hate having the scout because we can also we can always transfer the scout to the pantheon. This guiding this guiding touch needs to be kept so that we can heal off if the opponent has like a flock, for example. We finally get an equipment, so now we can finally start leveling up the pantheon. Just super super important. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna drop pantheon now. I'm gonna drop the pantheon now. And just tell the opponent you wanna you wanna attack us, you wanna attack us. And then I'm just gonna spend my time transferring over the equipment. Uh I'm gonna start with the rake here. I'm gonna start with the rake here. Because we can go lodestone nets. And we just pass. The punish is gonna be the centigrade. The centigrade can kill the pantheon even through the guiding touch. But I think I had to just go like this. I think I had to take it this way. This also means that we get to set up for a Furious Wielder eventually. The opponent also messed up in turn two, by the way, because once we once we summon the Saga Seeker, they should have just if they were gonna slam that Grusha, they should have just slammed it right away instead of attacking with the Concologist first. Because what if I had this Dark in Lowstone? I would have been able to use it on my Saga Seeker right away. Cool. They might be just trying to aggro us down. Double flock is a problem here. If they have to double flock, I think I'm also okay with that. Doesn't even have to be double flock, it just be a single flock and, and then like a group shot because it doesn't work like that. We can go Furious Wilder, we can have access to Aphelios. I think we're gonna have to just take that six damage. Problem is how far away we still are from Pantheon. Because we missed out on that early turns, right? The first three turns. Pantheon is still very far away. Portopalooza is not bad to get them a unit here, and it does. Gets in the Catalyzer. There's a problem here that if we block... If we block anything that has three health, we're losing to a flock, right? I'm losing to a Disintegrate here as well now. Okay, so they had to disintegrate anyways. I mean, that's fine. They were gonna have to disintegrate. They were gonna have it anyways. We had to. We had to start working on that panting map game, and just play out of disintegrate now. We're gonna go ahead and go for the Aphelios. We have access to Unforgiving Cold that kind of keeps me alive for a little bit. I think we're gonna go Crescendo first, and just need to have some blockers. We are kind of low, right? We are very low, which is a problem. But it does have a full border, which is not bad. We can we can uh, we can calibre them, their sentry while having a blocker here. Start working for the graviton, forcing the opponent to open attack. We have another blocker here. Opponent might choose to commit to killing the Aphelios now. Group shot? No, that's fine. The group shot doesn't matter to me because we can always get in touch it away, right? Yeah, there we go. So we still get the Calibrum out of this, and the opponent has to now commit another another card to kill this. And there it is. Like, it, it's obvious that the opponent had that setup, but I mean, having them commit those cards is also okay, in my opinion. Because uh, we can still go here. The problem is going to be this big assembly bot, right? But the assembly bot is always going to get hit by the Unforgiving Call. So I'm not too concerned about it just yet. Because we can freeze it. I guess the opponent could have units that they do on the stack. The Unforgiving Call is going to give us access to the Barrows too. 
So we will get another champion in our hand at least. It's not the Pantheon, and we're still going to need the Pantheon eventually. We can block, block, freeze. I guess we freeze, freeze, and block the other two. Yeah, we go Unforgiving Cold. That gives us access to Barris. But when it could technically still have access to... Uh, a way to pump this up, and we're gonna take two damage here, potentially three. Okay, doesn't have it. If the opponent has access to the Leviathan, that's gonna be a problem. Because we don't have a way to kill it. And there it is. Um. Hmm. Has to be Barris, right? I don't even think, honestly, I don't even think we've spent the mana trying to. Uh, level up Pantheon anymore because at this point you see the Barrows are bust. I need to make Barrows big enough to actually be able to kill that Leviathan and the way for me to do that is to actually put, uh, spend the equipment after Barrows is in the field because I'm going to need the mana. So I need to be able to kill this Leviathan. Victory awaits. Still means that we're going to get smacked by quite a few things, right? This is four. Also means that we have to find a way to kill this Swain. That's fine. Oh, we lose it. We lose it. Ha! So now we cannot kill the Levy. I didn't play around the Aloof, so that's on me. I did not play around the Aloof, so that's on me. I have to go Unforgiving Wave. I have to go the Wave because if the opponent has, if the opponent has anything else, then obviously that Wave is going to be a problem. We can go here. And go second barrels. And that would allow me to actually kill the Leviathan. Yeah, that would allow me to kill the Levy here. Because it's going to be exactly seven. Opponent's going to have to have another stun. We lost the Unforgiving Cold, though, which is a problem. We don't have another freeze. Ah, sorry. We lost the Furious Wilder, so we have no way to kill the Sway. We're living. But the opponent has, I guess we can block with Barris. And we have the spell shield and a bunch of other stuff. So we can block with the Barris. And kill all their units. I can level up the barriers really easily, right? Hmm. We block here. If we go here, Barris levels up, and then he's gonna have enough to be able to kill the swing. This is gonna give me the lifesteal. So that I can go out of range of like being at three damage. Opponent could have like a mini morph. If opponent has a mini morph, that's a problem. I do think I need to start killing this guy though sooner rather than later. Let's protect against the mini morph by going for the spell shield. So this means that we're not losing to a mini morph actually, and the barrel stays alive and we kill their pantheon. Ah, uh, their swain. So let's protect against the mini morph by preemptively doing the spell shield. We lose all our units, but we will get the... Uh, we do have the Horasi, right? For next turn, potentially. I didn't play around the Alub last turn. I think having them, for, having them a Furious Will, they would have been a lot better. But we end up getting really lucky with what we draw from the ending wave, being that second barrier. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to kill the Leviathan. And then the opponent just wins from there. We have Pale, we have Gaddy Touch. So we can potentially get some more draw here. Their fate, but they cannot deny it. Again, because we did this, the opponent doesn't have access to many more. On the on the black on the barrels at least. We're still looking for the second pantheon eventually. We lost our Philios. We suffered back one barrels. Oh wow. I'll take that. I'll take that. 
So we took four damage from that Swain. So the way to keep these barriers healthy enough is for me to actually go here. That means if the opponent tries to block this, we can just go Guiding Touch. Okay, so the problem with this Swain now is that the opponent can stun my, 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 my barriers, right? So the opponent will be able to stun my barriers. Hmm. Yeah, that second swing is a problem. Because if the opponent has like a death hand or a way to hit the Nexus, like a Poke Stick that can stun the barriers. Nora. I still think I don't, I don't think I want to spend my mana just yet. I think I'm gonna go Horasi. We're still planning to commit a way to stop the Nexus, otherwise he's gonna get Spell Shield and 7 health. It's gonna be a lot of damage, so if you if you, if you don't have a way to hit the Nexus, I think I'm fine. Okay, they, they have the mini mode. So we played around the mini mode earlier. We played around the mini mode earlier. I think this is where we play the pale. I think this is where we play the pale and just push a ton of damage. We get another Barrus for next turn. That's fine. We have we have a big mini T. That's an eight eight. I guess it's gonna go down uh, because of the bow, but that's that's okay. So we have a good blocker against the Swain. We have Guiding Touch. We don't have a way to stop the Nora. We have two blockers for the Swain. We can play the Barrus as well. Thunder Fist. And we're gonna get... Oh, actually, Pantheon didn't level up, so we're gonna get another Barrus here. We're gonna get another Barrus here. So in order for us to play around dying, we need to play Barrus first. This means that we still have two blockers here. Even if the opponent stuns the Barrus, we still have two blockers, right? So, and the opponent is also risking losing their Swain again. We don't have the way to actually kill their Swain, but the opponent is risking losing their Swain. They need to have another stun. And if that's the case, we can always play like the Shepherd. To have another... I guess this blocker is not going to be poor health. Because our blockers need to have more health than the swing can do, right? So it needs to be a second barrier that we need to summon. If the opponent has a way to stun this barrier, we need to summon the second barrier. That's why I end up committing to summoning the barrier first. We do have Gaddy Touch. The opponent could have access to like a stun. A second mini morph is also a problem. I think I have to go for it this way. I think I wanna have I wanna have my higher health unit here in case the opponent has access to a death hand, right? If they have access to a death hand, they can reduce the barriers to 3 HP. And that's okay. That's that's annoying, but it's okay because guess what? We're gonna have another barrier coming down on the field. And we can set up the open attack. We can set up the open attack with a really big barriers. Give an equipment to Horasi to buff the barriers up even higher. Group shot doesn't do it because we still have guiding touch, right? So we can go here. Ah, uh, the uh, the fearsome is the best one because the Nora cannot block. The opponent's gonna go for another flock and it's gonna get punished by the guiding touch unless you have another form of removal. Do you have another form of removal here, like another Poke Stick? They don't, and that should get us there. That should get us there because of the Fearsome, unless the opponent gets a bunch of three power units. I guess they could technically do that. Let's see. One doesn't get it. Doesn't get it, so we can actually pass along this to one of these units. 
Which I think is gonna be the Shepherd instead. The Barrows can still get the Overwhelm by going for the Pale Cascade. I need to attack now. The, the idea is that we're forcing them to block with the Swain, right? Because of the Fearsome on the two units. I think I need to attack like this. The Barrows has eight power, so the Overwhelm goes through. I guess we attack with everything, right? Because this is always gonna push damage too. Because the opponent has to block Swain with one of these two units here. I guess they could have another Porta Palooza and get something that can help them block the Pearson. This is still lethal here. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Oh man, that was dicey. Uh, I think the only thing that I would change in this game was probably not playing the Pantheon as early as I did, but I think I had to. But even the Spell Shield preemptively to stop that minimal that I knew that they put in half when, when they first attacked with that Swain all those turns ago was, I think, was what saved the game. If I don't preemptively use that spell shield, then the opponent can just minimal the barrels, goes down to three health, and the swing attack goes through because of the overwhelm. So GG's. In this matchup, we're going up against Katarina Leona. So that's a great start. Pantheon is nice. Ooh, the momentum is just a little bit awkward though. Okay, so this is gonna be aggro though. So I need to have the Batai. The Seeker could get pretty big. I think the Momentous Choice is just a little bit too awkward. That's a huge hit. Let's see if we can get an equipment. I'll keep the Shepherd. I think the Shepherd is good enough to get me started. We have a good blocker here against the Rear Guard. We can go Saga Seeker or even Divine Clerk. I have access to the Momentous Choice. The Furious Wield is probably good because obviously Karina. But I need a way to start like working on getting our our thing enabled. I don't want to sacrifice my units here. That's the problem. Like, I need to have a target for the Shepherd next turn. Like, I might just take this. I might take this three, knowing that we can heal it up later. Just so that I can make the Saga Seeker bigger. Maybe there's a consideration that instead of the Saga Seeker, we make the Divine Clerk bigger. But I think this is fine. We are going to be really late on our Pantheon, but I think it's more important. Okay, it's more important for us to keep this momentous choice for later. The Pan of Pain is good because of the tough, right? The tough is actually really clutch. The tough is going to be really nice because it's going to make this Saga Seeker really, really difficult for the opponent to deal with. We won't be able to deal with Katarina, but we will be able to block that Pigeon. And have a tough unit that's not gonna care about what the opponent does. We can play the Lunaric Cultist afterwards. Oh, if the opponent goes like this, I think I might just slam the Pantheon, to be honest. Uh, yeah, because they don't have the Blaze Edge. Like, how do you deal with this Pantheon now? Because the thing with Lunaric Cultist is that it's not really a good blocker, right? I think I'm gonna go Pantheon. I think I'm gonna go Pantheon and force the opponent to do something else. Yeah, otherwise I'm just taking a bunch of trades. I guess the opponent could technically have access to a way to stop to kill the Pantheon here. They could have a way to kill the Pantheon here. Like they could have a fervor, right? If we let it go like this, we're delaying the Pantheon by another turn. I think we take it. I think we take it like this. Yeah, that's the fervor that we just talked about. So now we can go here, and now we don't even get. To, now we don't even delay the pantheon, and we get a trigger on the pantheon. So we get the trigger on the pantheon, and we're still chilling. I figured they had a fervor, right? I figured they had a fervor once they attack and didn't develop anything else. So now the fervor gets wasted. We still get to advance Pantheon because of the momentous choice. They don't usually play Flock, so I'm pretty sure they don't have that. We can play Panel Pain on Pantheon, so the Pantheon now has tough and goes back up to 3 HP, meaning that I'm not scared of the Blaze Edge. You can do, you can do your Leona however many times you want, that's okay, because we're going to just go Lunary Cultus here. I guess the annoying part about Leona is going to be stunning our Pantheon, but at this point we just kind of want to get the Pantheon as big as we can, right? 
at this point, we just kind of get the planting as big as we can and kind of go from there. We also have barrels now, so it gives us access to the chain of corruption. The opponent doesn't even get a stun here. We can go here. And play the barrels out. I need, I want to do I wanted to do the gem first so that this unit is big enough to block anything that the opponent might throw at it. I guess it was already big enough to block the Leona anyways, but the opponent could have the morning light, and there you go, they have the morning light. So now they're able to actually challenge things, but if they actually get greedy and challenge, then they're losing to the momentous choice. Like if they get greedy and challenge the Barris, they're losing to the momentous choice. Because we can go here. And then we just do momentous choice and then they're losing the Leona. Answer to me. They went for it. To this is gonna go up to seven because of the bow. And it's also gonna have enough health. So just like that, Leona goes bye bye as well. And Barris is leveled up. We can play the Divine Clerk. I guess the only punish to the Divine Clerk is if the opponent has a second Leona in their hand. But they just use a second one, right? So the opponent will have to have the third Leona in their hand for us to be scared. Because I think I like the idea of going Divine Clerk into double Shin of Corruption. So we can go like this. Uh, let's go this guy vulnerable and get plus one to Pantheon. That way Pantheon levels up. So now Pantheon levels up here, and we can trigger the chain again. And if we get lifestyle on the Pantheon, then I just trigger the chain on the Pantheon. Otherwise, we just trigger on the Divine Clerk to get some healing. Oh, no, we got lifesteal. Yeah, this is game. So we trigger it again right here. Just to give the Pantheon the Faded trigger and another plus one, plus one. We go boom, boom. Now, the only problem here is that the opponent will have access to... Um, yeah, we're putting uh, access to like a fervor to kill the barrels, but it's not gonna matter. Our pantheon is, has life steal, has everything that we need to never lose this matchup anymore. So, and we also have a pretty good call for the Caribbean eventually. So, GG's. In this match, we're gonna against Nora Vegar. We do have like momentous choice, sorry, to be able to actually kill their, their champions. This hand is actually so good. I'm scared of Quietus, right? I'm scared of Quietus and the Saga Seeker. I think I have to just slam it, though. I think I have to just slam it. And if the opponent has the Quietus, then they have the Quietus. No Quietus. So we can play Lodestone and start advancing our Pantheon. And then next turn, play the Shepherd, right? Or maybe they decide that the Quietus is better off spent on the equipment. Which I disagree, because I think now the Saga Seeker is going to become a really big threat for them. Especially because now we're also going to have Fierce Wilder available to kill a Vagar as soon as he comes down. We can play Shepard and then keep the mana for Fierce Wilder in turn 4. If the opponent plays Quatus, that's okay because we have another equipment here. All he's going to do is just we're going to lose our uh, Oraxi. I think if, if, if the opponent gives you the Saga Seeker on turn 1, you always take the Quatus on turn 1. Because this guy is going to keep growing now. Yeah. Unless they just stop deck that, then it didn't make sense what they did. Onward. Like, it would have to be literally a topic for me to... And I didn't pay attention if it came from the left. So maybe it was, and maybe we're giving the opponent too much of a hard time. Okay. Drop the bomb. It does stop our Shepherd from actually working. I do like that tech in this deck. I see a lot of people playing Dark the Bond on the Vega. It makes sense. It's a nice way to kill Katarina for just two mana. It does make our Furious Wilder a lot awkward now. Because we can play the Bakai. But the Bakai is going to lose to quite a few things. Like Power Piece, right? I think I'm only... Oh, Poké Stick. I think I'm only playing this Bakai if the opponent plays... If the opponent plays uh, taps out of the two mana. Because if they keep two mana, I think it's too easy to lose to a Pokestick or a Balfis. That the Bakai doesn't make sense. Even if we're slowing down our Pantheon. Give me your 
I guess now we have to go like this and just kill their unit. Um, I think I'll just take the Pantheon. I don't want to be in a situation where I don't draw Pantheon later. I think I'm just going to take the Pantheon, considering that we have the Healer's Resurrection. Go like this. Opponent could have Bagar though, which means that the Pantheon will die. So maybe we pass first, but then again, I'm still slowing down this Pantheon by a lot. Yeah. They have the, the Bagar makes it impossible for me to actually play what I wanted to play. The top is so much better against stuff like Darkness, right? I think it has to be the top. I think it's so much better against stuff like Darkness. It also gives me the fourth power so that I can actually Furious Wilder that Vagar before my unit dies to the Darkness, right? So I can Furious Wilder that Vagar right away. This is a great draw. And if the opponent plays the Darkness, they don't have a way to summon another Vagar. We can play Pantheon. I think we still go ahead and just slap this on the on the Vega, right? Uh, the Furious Wielder, I mean. Makes the most sense. He advances our Pantheon too. We get rid of the Vagar. We have the Spell Shield to protect our Pantheon. Oh, I mean, if you if you kill those here and now you get rid of your darkness, I think that's a mistake. I, I guess you could have a vengeance, right? If you have a vengeance, that's what makes sense. But you cannot play vengeance and lose to the expanse protection because now we just get to play the pan. Now we just get to play the pan here, and Pantheon now has tough. We get to advance the Pantheon. If you have vengeance, you're gonna have to also have a group shot to back it up because this vengeance is gonna get blown out by the expanse protection. Because he decided to kill the other guy. Minimorph does it. And Minimorph is actually even much better for them. Because Minimorph means that we actually don't get to do the Healer's Resurrection. They also get to play Quietus. So they get rid of the equipment. We could expand protection here. Do we care about this equipment is my question. Like, if we commit the second Furious Wilder on this Nora, then we don't have a way to kill their second Vagar. Yeah, the Minimorph was much better than the than the than the uh, than the Vengeance, then, right? Because it means that our Healer's Resurrection is completely useless. I mean, we're still gonna get a Barris here shortly, but for us to get Barris, we'll need to play one of these cards. Okay, I'm forgiving Cole is nice. That okay, cool. I'm cool with that. We play the lodestone. You gave me another equipment. That's cool with me. Let's go ahead and play the clerk. Anything that the opponent buffs with the John Witch, we can still kill with the Minity. Come on, Rip. And if the Minity dies, I'm okay with that, because uh I'm okay with the Minity dying. Actually, I wish. I wish I wouldn't have played the the, the load, so now that I think about it. It's probably better to actually have Miss uh, Horasi on the field, right? What if we just go with this pants protection? Why don't we just go with this pants protection so that we can actually just draw these barriers? I know now it's gonna lose to a vengeance, but I think I'm willing to take that sacrifice. Especially because we have a healer's resurrection. Right now, we can go here, buffing the mini T to six, I uh, know to five. And if you want to kill the Horasi, that's okay. There's a price to pay. Oh, I guess the only problem here is that the Descent Ad is going to kill this Clerk, right? Light my way. Yeah, the Descent Ad is going to kill the Clerk, but at this point, I just want the Horasi. I just want the Horasi. You can trade here if you want, and you can trade here if you want as well. Why give me your Aloof Travelers? 
I guess maybe he takes care of something else. I'm okay with this. The darkness is gonna hurt a little bit. But we still gotta have Horasi and we're still gonna have the cultists. It's not enough to put me in range of a battle piece. And you're you're a five. I just realized that you're a five. Let me end our war. Our revenge. There's a consideration that instead of playing the cultists, we could just play Horasi and have access to resurrection. Because now we can play the Horasi, but we don't have access to the resurrection, and the opponent still gets to heal. I think we just land the Horasi out like this. That, that allows me to block the Sentinel. And we still play the Resurrection next turn, but now we're dying to like a, as another... We're dying to quite a few things, right? Because the Resurrection can be killed by a Vengeance. Can also be killed by a Minimore. So yeah, so I think our mistake was... Getting greedy. Opponent, we can block with the Cultist on the Desenata and block the Sentinel. Maybe the opponent chooses to just heal here instead. And that's fine. Let's force you to have it. Let's, and I don't want to play the Sega Seeker in case the opponent has like a Ruination or something. The other option is to kind of put like... No, it has to be the Healer's Resurrection. It has to be just the Healer's Resurrection. You dropped. I lose. I dropped everything. We lose Pantheon. We can get a second Horasi here. I am death. They get to kill the Barrows. I think that's fine, by the way, because I think I I, I want it like I committed to them join the benches because I just want to go like this. The opponent's gonna have to block with everything. We they get to trade one Horasi, but we still get a big board from next turn. Losing the Pantheon and the second Barrows does hurt a lot, though. That that Alu got a good hit. He killed our Pantheon, and he gave them the benches that they needed to kill the the Barrows. Is that a mistake? Should I just have attacked? I, I didn't really want to... Hmm. I guess I should have just attacked though. I, should, I guess I should have just attacked. The barrels would have been... The barrels would have just died next turn. But we would have pushed some overwhelm damage here. Opponent is smart enough to kill the Saga Seeker because the Saga Seeker is going to become bigger and bigger. That's smart. The problem with that is that both of these girls have spell shield naturally. So you don't have a way to kill them. And as long as we get another unit, you're going to be in trouble. Vagrack doesn't do anything. You're going to have to block. You're going to have to block. Let's start putting the Dark in Bow. So that we can actually make this unit even stronger. So you're going to have blockers. All right. So you're telling me, hey, look at me. I'm going to have blockers. If that's the case, let's just draw and see if we get something better that we can add into these girls. Yeah, let's let's just draw now. Let's take our let's take our draw. The opponent's going to have plenty of blockers. Their darkness is going to be like freaking huge. So the darkness is going to be a five, dealing five right now to the Nexus. Does another six. Next turn. They're going to they have a blocker because of the young witch. So we need to top deck. Aphelios, Pantheon, or a Shepherd and get overwhelmed from the Shepherd. So it has to be Aphelios, Pantheon, or the Shepherd. I guess we can force them to have another blocker. Yeah, they, this is the Shepherd. It needs to be Guiding Touch, right? No, Guiding Touch doesn't do it. You're gonna lose your Vega now. I guess they could have access to... Uh... I guess they could have access to a thing, to uh... It's Tally, to finish the game or have the third Vega. But you're losing your Vega now. If you don't get a portal here. You're gonna lose your Vega now. So now... Now opponent is 
at the mercy of getting another Vagar. You like magic? Oh. Okay, I mean that that doesn't matter to me. Actually, it's no, it's not worse. They still have enough. They still have enough because they Stally sits and they they, they are, the darkness will be four. So they still have enough to win with it Stally. Stally, Vagar gets them there. I know that unit gets them there. The elusive gets them there. They actually got the elusive, huh? That's unfortunate. We had an out. We had an out because we drew another blocker. We had an out until that elusive came into place. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, that's so sad. We didn't get the overwhelm anyways, uh, so it doesn't matter. And now the opponent knows that they win the game because of the elusive. Ah, uh, that's so sad. Ah. <laughs> uh, maybe we should have taken that. Excuse me? What? What just happened? Wait, what just happened here? What? Opponent? Excuse me? Ah, they're just toying with me now. So now you're trading your whole board because you didn't attack with your elusive. Excuse me? <laughs> you have to trade your whole board. I think opponent just realized that it got lethal last time. It's Tally or Vagar. It's Tally, Vagar, Nora. Nora also wins in the game because Nora is about to be leveled up and also has for Demacia to add more health to her. I'm so confused about what just happened. Oh, I can't believe they didn't realize that they had an elusive unit on the field. That's a rage crit. <laughs> Alright, GG's opponent. GG's. I'm sorry that you missed it, but at least in your case, it doesn't matter. The season is about to be over. In this match, we're gonna against... Shivana Aso. So his opponent is going to go in a little bit late. It's a little bit concerning because their units are going to be really big. We don't have any units in our hand, so we want to just mulligan everything because we need to have some units in our hand. I think it's going to actually be critical for us to get the Pantheon big as soon as we can. Obviously, the concern is going to be Concerted Strike. You can go through the barrier and then single combat. But the, the, the longer we wait to start triggering the Fader on the Pantheon, I think the worst is going to be for us because our Pantheon is going to be smaller than their big units. We can go Divine Clerk into Lodestorm to just start working on the Pantheon level up. I think that's going to be the best way to start. That will also give me access to the Spans Protection, which will allow me to obviously be able to kill, uh, to stop uh, at Concerted Strike, which is probably the biggest punish to losing Pantheon. We have both champions, which is good and bad. I think I prefer to have Lunari, but because we have double equipment, it ends up fine because we can just cycle the equipment to get to level up the Pantheon. But Lunari Cultist would be really nice here. If we had it. So we can go Lodestone on the Clerk. Come hither, you beast of glory. We can go Lodestone on the Clerk. Opponent's going to probably have Shivana and Nets then, right? So if, if, if the opponent's going to have Shivana and Nets then, I think we just open a tab with the Clerk first. Because the Shivan is going to be enough to block the Clerk. Once we play the Shepherd on it. Oh, wow. Okay. That's not a Shivana. So we go Shepherd here. Instant Uppers is not bad. I think I like having Quick Attack on my Pantheon. The extra health, though, is also really nice. 
No, I think I like having quick attack on the Pantheon. It's gonna allow me to attack with Pantheon. Even if the opponent has like really big Unix, right? We can go we can go Lodestone on the Divine Clerk and then. Dude, I'm just gonna go here again. I just wanna I'm just gonna cycle my equipment. I'm just gonna cycle my equipment so that we can try to level up the Pantheon. So Pantheon's already. So now we can drop Pantheon and give him the Pitsum Uppers. Knowing that the Pantheon, I guess the opponent can, Pantheon can still lose here to uh, Silence. Now I'm forcing you to have access to a single combat, right? So now I'm forcing you to have access to a single combat to pop the Spell Shield. And then we still have the Spell Shield plus the second Pantheon next turn. Okay. So. That's fine, right? I think I'm fine with this. Because again, we have a second Pantheon anyways. And a second Spell Shield. So Pantheon's gonna level up. And we have a third Pantheon. I would like to play the Quick Attack on the Pantheon though, before we actually get there. there is nothing cool. Like that That's what I'm talking about though. Their, their dragons are so big that I need to be able to make my Pantheon as big as possible. If the opponent has access to single combat, we could technically go Spell Shield, Momentous Choice, and be able to kill that Kajigan. Okay. The problem here is that if I play the Fits them up first and the opponent has access to a single combat, we're still losing the Pantheon. Unless we get Spell Shield here naturally. I definitely like having access to the Quick Attack here though. I think it's going to make my Pantheon such a big threat, especially if we get Challenger. We get Challenger, and Regen, and Elusive, I guess, but it's not a big deal. So if you have the single combat, you have a second single combat, you can kill the Pantheon here. The Challenger Quick Attack is really good. Challenger Quick Attack is really, really good. I wonder if we ever slam the Barrows first. I wonder if we ever slam the Barrows first to have two overgrown threats. Because Barrows is going to level up here very quickly because of the momentous choice. We wear red to honor the fallen. Would you know them to see them again, hmm. I think I actually want to kill the Kadrigan. I think I'm in a position where I don't need to rush this. Because I have a Pelios now. I think I can do... I wish I have also attacked with the Shepherd. I don't know why I didn't attack with everything. I'm in a position where I don't need to rush this. If the opponent plays Concerted, they are losing to the Spans Protection. Alright. Pantheon is going to continue getting bigger. We can play a Pelios now. And honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna click the Calibron. I'm gonna click the Calibron because if the opponent does an open attack, we can kill that dragon that that dragon guard and cycle into Graviton. Single combat gets punished by momentous choice. Pantheon has elusive, and I'm just gonna set up an elusive lethal next time, right? I think it was important for us to kill that Cadrian because he had a power. So it's the only thing that can potentially kill Pantheon with like single combat. Concert is still an issue, but not as much as, as the other stuff. It can kill Aphelios here technically, and, and, and you know that sucks, but it's not impossible to come back from. And that's gonna get you punished by the momentous choice. All right, and we trigger the Fury as well, making our Pantheon even bigger. And we trigger the Fated, and we get another Barrus now. More than this. We are more. I guess you could have access to another Sombers, but the Sombers doesn't kill us because it doesn't silence anymore. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a good sh it's a good shot, right? The sharp side to get there, but our pantheon just gets so much bigger that we were able to just get through it, so GG's. Hey, welcome back everybody. Hope you enjoyed today's games. Really fun games, especially the first one was really fun and, and really, really had to think that through. I, I'm so glad that I saw that line about pre-committing the expanse protection to protect my barriers. Uh, so, yeah, to protect my barriers so that it wouldn't get many more when he was blocking the swing attack. Really, really clutch. Uh, I think I played that one really, really well. On the other side, the Vagar Nora game, I think I got played a little bit more cleanly, but the opponent just completely missed their lethal and just rage quit on us. But we can count that as a loss. I mean, we should have never won that game after the opponent got lucky and rolled that elusive like that. But that, that, it, it is what it is. That's sometimes how, this, how, the, game, how the dice rolls with card game luck. In terms of mulligan with this deck, I think Lunari Cultus is your most important card. Having the Nari Cultus in your hand in the beginning allows you to get access to the gems, which will allow you to have a cheap way to be able to level your Pantheon and your barriers as the game goes on. So I'm looking for the Lunari Cultus. I'm looking for the Forsaken Bakai, because Forsaken Bakai is a nice one drop that can protect some aggression and also predict into something else that we need. Low Stone is good to keep if you already have one of these units in your hand. Like if you already have Saga Seeker or Bakai or the Cultus, that's when I would keep the Low Stone. But for the most part, you don't want to keep the low stone if you don't have any other units, because then you're going to end up breaking really hard. So look for Cultist, Forsaken Bakai, Saga Seeker in certain situations, and then look for your Lodestone as a second condition. If you already have a good enough early hand, that's when I'm considering potentially keeping one Pantheon. Like if I already have a Lunaric Cultist and a Lodestone, then I will keep a Pantheon, because I know I'll be able to level up the Pantheon really easily, and I want to make sure that I have a Pantheon in my hand, so that I can drop him down either earlier or as soon as he levels up and just get a lot of value from his faded triggers. Uh, so that would be my suggestions in terms of mulligan. But enough about that for me today. Hope you enjoyed today's games. If you did, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch September. We stream every now and then. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again tomorrow.